This video contains spoilers for the Indigo Disc. Watch at your own risk. Hey Pokemon Masters, Buggy Potobi here, and I have just woken up, but I saw something on Twitter that I had to jump into the Indigo Disc to find, and I'm blown away. Quick reminder, of course, as I do with every single video, that my merch store is closing down in two weeks, so if you want to get a Trio Evolution poster, link top of the description, thank you for the support. Let's talk about this theory, this is a very cool theory. So first thing this morning, I looked at Twitter, I saw this image, I found it in-game, and this is an image on the wall of the Blueberry Academy's, um, like, the hangout room that you can customize. And it turns out, if you customize the room, with a modern monochrome feel, you get this image. And this, for those of you who are still not sure, you're looking at it and you're unsure, this is uh, the White Tree Hollow and the Black Tower from Pokemon Black and White, but it's more than just an Easter egg. There's lore here. So these areas are obviously exclusive to Pokemon Black version for the Black Tower and Pokemon uh, the White Tree Hollow for the Pokemon White version. Uh, they're the same area in game, but obviously just depending on the version, you get a different one. The idea being that in one version of reality, you have a metropolis-like city, and in another version of reality, uh, nature has taken over and you can catch mystical Pokemon there. So here's the question. Why are both in this game? Canonically, what does the Indigo Disc follow on from? We know that it's in the Unova region, sure, but which Unova region? The one we saw in Pokemon Black or the one we saw in Pokemon White? It's not just an Easter egg. You see, and I was talking about this uh, in a theory I did with Dusty Gogo when I went out to the Unova region myself. I went to New York, I met up with Dusty Gogo. We had a chat about this, uh, this idea that Unova has a couple towns like this, one of which is Opelucid uh, City, which is the one where obviously Drayton uh, is from. The uh, This is a cool room, by the way. Look at that, you got your Unovan bridges and you've got your like little crag and all hangy thing. Anyway, that's I'm getting distracted. Um, Drayton, obviously, from Opelucid City. Opelucid City also has like a past version and a future version, depending on what version of the game you're playing. In fact, let me get my DS. Haven't had to get this capture card out in a while. Okay, all right. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is the good stuff. This is the good stuff. Pokemon White version. Boot it up. If we fly to Opelucid, so in White version, for me, it is the past version. But obviously, if I was playing Pokemon Black, it would be the future version. And there's a house somewhere here, a very important house uh, that has a very important someone in it. Wait, Drayden's house. I wonder if Drayton's in here. There's no way. Because this would be set, I reckon, a good, like, decade before... Uh, this would be set a good decade before uh, the events of the Blueberry Academy. Any of these guys look like Drayton? You look like Drayton? Are you Drayton? If you're Drayton, that was very rude. I'm not concerned about my Pokemon weight. My Embor is beautiful, thank you. Focus, Toby. This is why we don't do theories first thing in the morning. Right. The house. Well, it's gotta be this one. This is literally the last house in the entire town that I'm checking. I did this not that long ago. Okay, is it you? I want to know the future. Here we go. I want to know the future. I'm very worried. This guy, he wants to know the future. He's worried. Typical stuff. I wonder how my child, time, will spend their future. Ah, time. So I'm making a machine that connects the future and the present. It's a time machine. Uh, but electricity is uh, desperately short. I've heard that in another world, there's an Opelucid city that looks very futuristic. If there's a Pokemon from that world that knows the move charge, the machine may work. And uh, if you, uh, I don't have that Pokemon with me at the moment, but if you have a Pokemon like Blitzel, for example, is probably the one you're going to go for. From Pokemon Black version, you trade over and you get the cell battery item, which is a battle item. And he makes a time machine. Interesting as well is that you probably will do it with a Blitzel, and I'm pretty sure Cyrano gives you a shiny Blitzel as like a as like a default thing you can get here in the Indigo Disc. So all very interesting stuff, but what does it all mean? Well, I think in large part it's all to do with this guy. It's all to do with Cyrano, who's very suspicious. So he's the founder of the Blueberry Academy, right? And the Blueberry Academy is, according to the various Pokemon materials, a sister site to the uh, Academies of Scarlet and Violet. Except what's interesting is, like I say, this Terrarium didn't exist in the time of Black and White and Black and White Two. It's probably not older than, say, 10 years. I think in terms of the in-game timeline, it's been around 10 years since Black and White 2's release, and that times up with the release of, like, the, the year in-world that uh, Black and White 2 happened, and that now these events are happening. So this Terrarium is probably not over a decade old, and that makes sense as well, because you've got, like, um, Lacey is Clay's daughter, uh, and that's interesting as well, because in Drift Vale, there are these gems that look like uh, Terrastal gems, and... On Lacey's team, there is uh, Excadrill, which is obviously not only Clay's ace Pokemon and Clay, Lacey, L-A-C-Y, um, but also her Excadrill. If you look at the Pokedex for Excadrill, the Pokedex entry for Excadrill says that it's good at making tunnels. And this whole dome is underwater and in the Unova region. I'll just go there. 
Here we go. We have uh, connecting Undella Town, Undella Bay, and uh, Himalau City. We have the marine tube made with cutting edge Unovan technology. So I suspect that this tunnel was made by the likes of like Clay and Drifale and as payment for that they get the Pokemon World Tournament with all these powerful trainers in Drifale City and all of this is a sort of demo, a setup to prepare for the Indigo Disc being built, the Blueberry Academy. But okay, what about the other bits of the Terrarium, the bits that Cyrano knows about like the weird Terrapagos orb at the top of the Terrarium? Like, okay, how do we how do we explain that thing? How did Cyrano know to get the materials to make this, which ultimately allows for the entire dome to exist, for the, the climate to be adjusted, um, these cubes that are all over the map that, that kind of help the terrarium happen and help life sustain under here? How did Cyrano know about the obviously the actual the digging the technology to get this dome in place that was with the help of the people of Driftvale and likely clay and uh, probably a good reason as to why Lacey is at this school but what about the dome what about this technology the technology of Terrapagos and this is where everything kind of comes together with uh, the different versions of Unova and the guy making the time machine in Unova I believe that Cyrano offered help to Sada and Churo in the in their expeditions in Area Zero and in creating the time machine based on what he knew from the Unova region of time machine creation and parallel universe and alternate timelines. Remember, we now know that the Paradox Pokemon come from alternate timelines, like the Black City and the White Tree Hollow. I believe that the reason that Sada and Churo were able to begin that research and learn that research is because they were being funded and helped out by Cyrano. And actually, I don't even think that's a theory. I think that's just part of the lore. I, I, I think it's mentioned in passing in the DLC. The Blueberry Academy is only like a decade old. Uh, the Academies of Scarlet Violet are 800, and yet they're considered sister sites. We know that obviously Clavel and Cyrano know each other very, very well. And as we explore the research stations in Area Zero, in blue notebooks, I might add, blueberry blue notebooks, uh, my prototype Terror Orb I secured, uh, thanks to my prototype Terror Orb, I secured corporate funding for my research and made a laboratory in the lighthouse near the Cabo Poco um, to someday though I'll return to the crate and resume to study these crystals. So the Terror Orb, which is, I mean, I think effectively the thing at the top of the terrarium is a giant Terror Orb, uh, sort of. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's similar technologies, uh, but it's the Terra Orb that convinced Cyrano that, ah, brilliant, I'll work with Sada and Churo because uh, what they might be able to provide the terrarium is the kind of fuel that makes everything run. And so in return, he was able to fund this project and provide research data. I'll also just note here that the Terra Orb was completed around 10 years ago with the help of Professor Clavel as well. So Clavel knows Cyrano. Cyrano would have started building the Indigo Disc around 10 years ago after the events of Black and White 2. So the timeline lines up. And one of the first things we learn in the Indigo Disc is that it cost him a lot of money to make. So he was a financial backer for something for the technological production of this Indigo Disc. So there you go. He's the perfect research partner for a freaking time machine because you know it already has a pretty good understanding somehow someone in Unova has a pretty good understanding of time machines and alternate timelines in fact they know it so well that it's literally taught at the Blueberry Academy where the art class are like yeah we'll add that as your decor just casually even though it is literally showing you that alternate timelines exist it would be so cool if I went to Opalucid City and there was a character that did something, like an NPC that was just like, oh, I want to build a school. I just had a crazy idea. There's a guy in the marine tunnel who says that the way that they built the marine tunnel is things like that are built on land and then lowered into the sea. And I was just like, so I wonder if that was the case for the Indigo Disc. And then I was like, well, hang on. Didn't the cold storage area kind of be a, con was that like a construction area in black and white? Wait, what if they were constructing the Pokemon World Tournament only temporarily? What if the Pokemon World Tournament area becomes the Blueberry Academy and then they lower it into the sea uh, and it becomes the Indigo Disc? But I I'm not sure on that now. I there's not enough evidence for it. Trust me, I've spent the last 30 minutes off recording trying to find something. Though the currency of the Blueberry Academy is BP and you get BP from the um, 
from the Pokemon World Tournament. And, you know, it is a battle facility for the toughest trainers, which is exactly what this is. Maybe it really was only a temporary thing. Maybe they were building it um, initially on land. And then once it got big enough, it became the Blueberry Academy and they took it offshore. Wild. Imagine if that was like, I'd love to see some evidence for that. Maybe you'll find it. You can let me know in the comments. That's the theory. That's my first thing this morning. I got more videos coming on the Indigo Disc. I'm working very, very hard. By the way, none of these videos count towards the kind of six final videos that I've got coming up. These are all just bonuses because the Indigo Disc has got me excited. So let me know what you're thinking in the comments. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments. And of course, while you're down there, do click that link at the top of the description to get yourself a nice, comfy new jumper for the holidays or perhaps a poster, a tree of evolution to look after yourself. And of course, it supports me while I'm going away. Thank you, everyone. And of course, Saw High Pokemon Masters. Hello there, it's me, Professor Oak. This video is over, so please choose another one wisely and quickly. Bye-bye. Thank you anyone who has ever contributed through Patreon, and especially the big patrons of this month, Lucas Gates, Anthony Lee, Charmander Anzibal, White Seed Deke, Immortal Absol, and Jed Rubin. Thank you for your incredible support.